As budget battles are fought from Capitol Hill down to local government buildings, workers' benefits have been under the microscope. Among them, tenure for public school educators is a hot topic. Does academic tenure prevent schools from employing the best teachers possible? Or is tenure responsible for creating a classroom freedom that fosters the education of students? We examine academic tenure, economics, and workers' rights today on The Professors. From across the city and the seven city colleges of Chicago, broadcasting from 63rd and Halsted at Kennedy King College, professors take the art of conversation to a higher degree. I'm Rashid Carter from Harold Washington College. Joining me today are professors Linda Murphy from Wilbur Wright College, Ted Williams from Kennedy King College, and also from Kennedy King College, Pamela Canamore. Welcome. Today's topic is tenure, mm -hmm. uh, something that we all possess. And for our listening audience, or our viewing audience, um, <clears throat> before we get into the nuts and bolts of a conversation, I think it's probably important to define exactly what tenure is. Sure. So on, uh, I guess this is actually the 101st anniversary of the first granting of tenure. Sure. What is tenure for teachers? Sure. Tenure was actually instituted to protect teachers. Uh, when teachers are politically involved or when teachers have um, positions that they take that are maybe uh, different than what the administration would want them to take. Uh, oftentimes, for many years, teachers would lose their jobs very easily. And so uh, among the concept of academic freedom, uh, tenure came in as a protection for teachers. And the myth is that teachers cannot be fired if they have tenure. Uh, the reality is, is that teachers are given um, uh, special recourses that they uh, they're given special protections and so you have to they have opportunities for appeals and that sort of thing so tenure really provides protection uh, for academic freedom mm -hmm. but it does not prevent teachers from being fired why was that protection necessary what was what was it needing to be protected sure sure uh, primarily pol political views right okay. uh, uh, when teacher when tenure was first instituted uh, there were teachers that were organizing um, uh, in ways that were uh, opposed to positions in the uh, administration. I'm very, very interested in this, in this issue because uh, I know personally of a few cases of academic freedom issues where teachers have lost their jobs uh, when they have expressed, say, views on intelligent design in the scientific uh, classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually very common today. Uh, and so we think about there was a great need for this historically, but even today, uh, this has been uh, something that is very much needed still today. Yeah, w within the context of academic freedom, tenure seems to be pretty important. What are some of the benefits and some of the drawbacks of tenure from your perspective? Well, certainly the benefit of tenure with the academic freedom is once you're in your classroom and maybe you have some uh, creative ways to make a point with your students so that they understand the concept then it would not be so scrutinized mm. if it's not deemed the traditional way of teaching. Okay, okay. Like to add anything, Linda? Mm. Well, I'm completely blank. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So, that's, so at the end of the day, I mean, what we want to be able to discuss in the context we want to create is just the ability, ability to draw from our own experiences. Yeah. Because like I said, we're all tenured professors. Yeah. And so the one thing that I can definitely um, um, draw from in terms of my experience is um, what it was like to be a non-tenured professor versus what it's like to be a tenured professor. Sure. Can you guys share your experience about being non-tenured and tenured? And I guess I'll, I'll just um, you know, make it more specific than that. What is one difference in your method of teaching? Well, I'll, I'll answer that question. Uh, one of the criticisms of tenure is that um, once someone achieves tenure, then they, they no longer want to well, put forth the same well. effort. <laughs> okay. right. I would say that, okay. if anything, I've worked harder yeah. after I've received tenure. To me, tenure didn't, didn't change anything mm -hmm. for me. Okay. Um, I felt fairly secure before tenure, sure. and I feel secure now. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that we have it because I view our positions as more of a partner with the administration mm -hmm. than... Uh, than someone who is just subservient to administration. Sure. So I think we can work together. If anyone should have the right to participate in moving the school forward, it's the faculty. Mm -hmm. And I think tenure helps us do that. And I agree completely because I'm a firm believer that, you know, my constituency, if you will, is my students. Mm -hmm. And I need to make sure that I am working in a way to, to benefit them. I mean, okay. they pay money to come and to be influenced by me. 
uh, tenure for any teacher that is is halfway decent or has any amount of integrity uh, about what they do, uh, tenure would not stop you from doing the best job that you could possibly do to make sure those students get the education they deserve. And so there's a lot of perceptions, political perceptions, I think, that exist uh, about uh, this concept that I think are really uh, untrue. Well, let's dig in a bit, though, because I know when it comes to this whole notion of security and what we see right now across the nation is that this concept of tenure is under assault, um, especially by <coughs> conservative political forces. Sure. Um, when, when they describe security, they usually describe it as a negative within mm -hmm. the context of tenure. So can we characterize that a bit? What, what is the negative connotation attached to having tenure as a security? Yeah. I think they're concerned with the teachers that they feel are not effective or are not doing a good job with presenting information to the students, being above board, yeah. presenting their discipline in the best manner possible. And there are but, cases but like that. But that's the exception. Mm -hmm. That is not the there rule. Okay. Uh, for the most part, all the professors are mm -hmm. committed, hardworking, sure. dedicated, and they want the best for their students. The, of course, the the, the professors that come across as strict or uh, very hard yeah. are the ones that have set standards That's right. because it's a community college, we're yeah. a two-year school, and in my own classroom, I make a point to let them know that just because it is a community college, a two-year school, this is still the foundation and I do not lower my standards yeah. because it's a community college. And to be fair to the other side, there are plenty of cases where they oftentimes reference the amount, uh, the cost of, uh, of firing a teacher that they feel is, is bad. Uh, and so there was a case in Florida of a teacher that, uh, that they thought was really not doing a great job in many ways, a lot of different, you know, um, examples of what they were doing in the class that I won't go into here. But the point is, is that uh, that, that case cost the state of Florida $8,000 to get rid of the teacher. But what people don't understand and what I think is so problematic with this conversation is that teachers don't make that much money anyway. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so the average teacher sal salary has gone down in the past 30 years. Uh, the average teacher makes uh, around sixty-five, sixty-seven thousand dollars $67,000. And comparable to other fields with the same level of education, teachers make 14% less than other professionals with the same levels of education. So the reality is, is that tenure is a benefit. It is sort of, I believe, one of the few real solid ways that the profession is respected today in our culture. And for that reason, I think it's very important. You know, we, you, you mentioned cost and the economics of this whole notion of tenure. Um, of course, in Florida, they decided to move to a system um, where every two years you, um, you get a, a new contract. And so every two years you're basically under review um, as opposed to the tenure paradigm. Uh, what are some of the economic considerations that we want the uh, viewing audience to um, take away from our discussion? What are the economics? What, what are some of the driving forces? Sure. Uh, well, I, I would say that th there's something going on with tenure. The tenure is supposed to be granted after a period of time in which the faculty member is observed and, and vetted and found to be competent. Okay. okay. And all administrators have the opportunity to fire faculty members. That's at K through 12 level, uh, the college, two-year college level, at the university level. Okay. Um, tenure uh, in some states, Mississippi grants tenure after one year. Ohio just went to seven years. Most universities use a seven-year standard. Our schools use uh, the beginning of the fourth year we receive yes. tenure. But the responsibility really lies upon, upon the fellow uh, faculty, at least at our college, and the administration to, to see that that faculty member is um, a competent faculty member by the time they're tenured. What I found is that uh, many times they don't do their job, the administration. And okay. the reason that we end up with a few bad apples is that they haven't done their job and the person should have not received tenure. However, overall, I think we're doing an excellent job in our schools. Okay. Uh, one of the students in my class came up to me today, uh, a few days ago after reading an article saying, this tenure thing is, is no good, you should, you know, should be get gotten rid of and so on and so forth. And I said, well, what's been your experience here at, at Wright College? And he said, well, I've never had a bad teacher. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, we talk, you know, in terms of the economics, just getting back to that just for sure. a bit. We, um, we have an example, of course, at least we had an example with uh, Michelle Ree mm -hmm. in uh, Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. where she offered an option to teachers, right? And so the option was either they can keep their tenure and make um, a, a lower salary, the, the salary that you described, Ted, or they can give up their tenure rights and make upwards, or I, I think um, it was, was $130,000, right? Mm -hmm. So a very lucrative earnings sure. um, relative sure. to what uh, teachers usually earn. Sure. What do you guys think about that option? Is that a proper paradigm? What do you think? I don't care yeah. for it at all. Go on. 
I, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I mean, the money sounds tempting, obviously, um, but what I think happens is uh, I think the integrity of uh, what we teach then gets compromised as a result. Because now uh, education no longer becomes a, a mission-based vocation, but it becomes primarily um, a, a financial-based vocation. And the danger in that and, and the conversations that are happening now are basically saying, hey, look, education ought to be run through a consumer model where the student is the consumer. And I think this, this conversation is very dangerous. I, I really have a hard time watching politicians talk about education who've never been in a classroom, never stepped in a classroom, never understood that, that, that dynamic, basically saying that the student ought to be the consumer. To a certain level, that is true. But at the end of the day, if, a, if you look at the way consumerism works, you decide that you, know, you don't feel like having McDonald's today, so you go have Burger King, or you decide that Burger King doesn't have the, the right special, so you go to Wendy's. And it begins to, um, I think, uh, have a negative impact on this idea and this concept of education, specifically at a time when we've got to pour more energy, more resources, more mm -hmm. ideas, and give more honor to this, this field because we're slipping in education in America. Plus, not only that, going to the consumer model with the students, the students do not always know what they need. And although we are transparent, sure. a good professor is transparent in the information that they share with their students and why something is important, the information may, or the, the way the, the delivery yeah. may come across as strict or hard and the student not understand that we're preparing them for outside yeah. the classroom. And the consumer model would and not allow for that. And the consumer model exactly yeah. would not allow for that. And not only that, the, the students, uh, and I, I share this with them, I said, well, where are my parents? Mm -hmm. And they raised their hands and I said, do you give your children cake and ice cream every day? Mm -hmm. And I said, so consider my class your broccoli, yeah. Yeah. your spinach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so you good. can't always have cake and ice cream. Yeah, and you have to have your vegetables sometimes. And so yeah. in having the vegetables, it sure. makes you strong. Yeah, sure. that's right. That's yeah. right. So, in yeah. look, and so when, they, when I share it that way, they sure. laugh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but then they don't always know what's good for them. Yeah. So to turn into a consumer model sure. would not be and, um, and, and Rashid, you would mentioned earlier this question of uh, cost. Yes. Um, and I want to speak to that for a second please, please, because please. Um, you know, of course we are in a recession, of course we have cost issues, but uh, federal expenditures on education only represent about 3% of our budget. So at the federal level, we're not spending that much money on education. Now we are spending more money at the state level, but you get a different, you know, level of education depending on what state you're in. And so people are concerned, but there are other ways to do this. Um, you know, Britain doesn't offer tenure. But Japan does, and what they do is they have an earlier retirement age. Mm. And so that's sort of the way that they offset the cost issue. There are ways to do this without demonizing teachers, without demonizing education, and without looking at that as the first way to cut budgets, because the reality is, is that when we look at cost, if we start with education, then there are re uh, repercussions all across the society that uh, I don't think that we've thought through. Let me explore a counterpoint here. And I've been in debates about this very topic. Sure. And um, one of the things that's usually offered by those who oppose the granting of tenure is this argument that um, a teacher is a teacher. So if it's an adjunct teacher, uh, a part-time teacher, or a full-time teacher with tenure, uh, without tenure, a teacher's a teacher. Mm -hmm. So if they're in a classroom, they have the expertise, then it really shouldn't matter what sort of contractual arrangement brings them to the classroom. As long as they're there and they're giving good instruction, that's what matters most. What would be your counter argument to that point? Well, unfortunately, we have more adjuncts than full time. Yeah. And the ratio really is way off. It should, there is a, a ratio, and I don't know exactly what it should be. But when you have such a high level of adjunct, not that just a teacher is a teacher or a professor is a professor, but the adjuncts have other commitments. So they are your hired teacher for that time frame. And they put in their, their office hours, but they may not have the time because they are adjunct. They don't receive the benefits. They get paid for that one class. But once their, their time slot is up, and they've, they fulfill that, they may not do the extra because they cannot do the extra because they may have another full sure, time someplace sure. else. Okay. And that, that tends to be the norm. Yeah. Uh, I was adjunct with city colleges back in 1984. Mm -hmm. And it has, the plight of the adjunct has certainly improved since then. Yeah. 
because at that time I literally lived out mm. of the trunk of my car wow. and mm. had to cart everything around and they didn't always have a yeah. place for an adjunct. Okay. It was mostly just a classroom.